welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kim Lau and this program is called Hawaii Rising. The point of this show is people helping people to um, work on the community as well as the economy because that's the only way that we'll be able to create a sustainable future for Hawaii. So there's definitely, definitely nothing wrong with organizations who put together a beach cleanup day or um, a beautification project for their staff to participate in. Those are fantastic ways to promote community involvement and awareness. However, when we're talking about professional staff, say like a lawyer whose actual billable rate is maybe 300 or more dollars an hour, what is the most valuable way for that professional to contribute to the community? Perhaps using that professional's given professional skills to enrich the community and the lives of people who need those skills would be a more value added way for that professional to share their time. And it's probably why many lawyers do provide their services pro bono to those who cannot otherwise afford it. But there's others in the community that do provide these pro bono services, other industries um, outside of the legal field. And that's who we're gonna talk to today. So I'd like to introduce my guest today, Robert Kubota from Douglas Engineering, and Nate Wilbur, who's an intern, and his title is Electrical Designer, also with Douglas Engineering. Thank you and welcome to the show today. Hey, thanks for having yeah, us. It's great to be here. Um, so, First of all, I'd like to um, maybe introduce yourselves. Um, we'll start with Robert, maybe a, a little bit of what you, I guess maybe what you do at Douglas Engineering and how you got there. Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, well, today I'm the vice president of Douglas Engineering. Um, I'm a project manager. The project manager came about because at the time, we didn't have project managers, and you know there were project managers out there in the in the industry, but but uh, I felt like we needed something in house to kind of control and maintain the integrity of the project, you know. And you know, for for most people, uh, engineers aren't that articulate, right? And so um, there's a lot of there's a lot of I guess assumptions or errors in the, the way we, we, they communicate. And so the project manager position was, was created so that we could kind of bridge the gap between our clients and our, and our engineers. And then, um, and, and so, and, and the vice president portion, you know, that's, you know, that's more the day-to-day -day operations of the company. You know, uh, today, you know, my role is to figure out you know where we're going to go, where what our purpose is in the future, you know, and and how we make ourselves relevant, you know, moving forward. And so, and how I got here, well, uh, you know, I, I didn't come from an engineering background. You know, um, uh, I started I started, well, I started at a bank, and then I went to I went to a lighting rep, you know, a manufacturer's rep that that made light fixtures, and then um, and then I ended up in engineering, and and that transition, you know, it's always to me it's always been interesting, you know, it, it's definitely not the normal course. Yeah, it's not the traditional engineering path, which is great. I mean, it goes to show that people don't have to follow the traditional path to get somewhere where they can make an impact or a difference in, in a company. Right, right. And so it, for me, it's been really rewarding, you know, engineering. It, it's taught me a lot about life. It's taught me a lot about the community. You know, it's, it's taught me a lot about um, what opportunities we have to help others in a much global uh, scale, I guess. Can maybe can you, can, can you tell us quickly um, what exactly does Douglas Engineering do? Maybe some of the projects that you've worked on. Mm. So we've done. We, we we do like we do government projects. You know whether it's uh, we did the federal building, the Prince Hill federal building renovation. Uh, we do electrical and mechanical engineering. So that that that's mainly you know power, lighting, fire alarm, and we do mechanical where you know it's the air condition, the plumbing, the fire sprinkler systems. 
um, we've done schools, uh, we've done churches, hotels, offices, retail, you know, so just kinds. pretty much, pretty, yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much everything, you know, everything that we could, we could do, we've, we've, we've tried to do, you know, and so. And Douglas has an internship program. As yeah. The part of one of um, the just the everyday program that you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is Nate. Uh, and and uh, and and we. Yeah, we just it's 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 a program where we feel that it's necessary for the future of our industry. You know, it started off where we only had one person or two people. You know, and today we have um, we have seven interns this oh, wow. summer. Yeah, for a staff that's only we only have thirteen employees. And so, seven and so interns is kind of Additional seven interns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've gone from paid internships to non-paid internships. We've, we've kind of floated between the, the two ideas, you know, just to, just to figure out what's, um, you know, what motivates our, our staff, you know, to make them realize that work, what we do is not about the money. Right. You know, I think today right. it's, more, it's more necessary to, to teach that. And so what do you, um, I guess, what do you hope by hiring interns? Is it more for interns to learn, like bringing up future generations, or? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it, well, it's, it's one, you know, it's one for us to, to, to see, to find, well, to meet, you know, new prospects, you right. know. I mean that's that's a big reason why we 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 do internships, but but more importantly to see how we can influence them. You know, because a lot of them they come out of school and they tell it. They t- the first thing they tell me is, my teacher told me this. I should get paid this, or I'm going to be doing this. You know, and and that's not really th- that's not really the reality of yeah. It doesn't quite cut it in the real world. <laughs> no. Yeah. You're gonna work this many hours, right? I mean, that's 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 not that's not really the the norm, I guess. You know, and so we wanted to we wanted to have a way where we could influence their expectations. You know, now, you know, before they get into the real world, and then somehow they're right. disappointed. You know. Right. That's so, true. That's a good point. Yeah. Managing expectations. And Nate, you are a senior this year. Yeah, I'm. I'm about to start my senior year at uh, UH Manoa. And what is your um, degree? Uh, it's going to be electrical engineering. And you've been an intern for how long at Douglas? Uh, about three years now, I think. Yeah, three I think years. it's about three. And yeah. is that a, s- a special situation that you have? Uh, well, I'm very fortunate to have landed an internship here. I am. Um, actually started off by, um, I met Doug Burr, who's our president, and I'd, <clears throat> I didn't even take a single engineering class at the time. I, was, I, I just started college, and um, so I didn't even know what engineering was. He just, he just kind of overheard me talking about, you know, I wanted to be, a, I was thinking about getting into engineering, so you know, when I started off, I really didn't know, I didn't have much direction, and uh, working at the company gave me a lot of guidance, and kind of showed me the world of engineering and I realized that you know it's something that I want to get into and that's awesome that yeah. you can do that for young minds young people you know help guide them instead of you know show them what you can do where you can go and bring out that passion as to what you really want to do because a lot of students kind of just go through college and they wait to the end and they're like oh what do I do now mm-hmm. yeah that, that I mean yeah. That's really what happens, right? For all of, for well, not for, not for maybe you, but for, for definitely for most, for a lot of us, you know, it's it's, you know, even though when you pick something, it's not necessarily what you, what you're going to end up in, you know. Right, and so. to have that chance to try it out before mm-hmm. actually entering the workforce, and to know that you actually like that subject and it's something that you want to keep pursuing, that's an amazing chance that you have. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the points that I heard early on um, from other people in this industry was that, you know, we don't want to invest into our internships. Right. Because they're just going to leave and they're going to take the information and go somewhere else. Right. You know, but I kind of feel like it, it's, it's, our, it's our purpose to, to e- even if they leave, 
you know, it's our purpose to give them that perspective so that they can, they, when they go out and they compete against us or they work for us or wherever they are, you know, it, to me, it's that value that they're adding to whatever company they're going to right. and they're boosting the industry as a whole, right? And so that, that I mean, that's our real, that's our real goal, you know, is to, 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 to see these guys successful in life, you know, not at Douglas Engineering, right? But, but outside the office, you in know, in life, in your profession, and in the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's yeah, and and with the amount that the the company's invested in me, you know, I I feel like, you know, I I've, I've kind of found a like a, a family, something that I would want to stick to after college. And so. Um, can you expand on that? So they're providing you training guidance, and they're also helping you monetarily with school. Oh yeah, they're they're helping me um, pay for my schooling and stuff like that. It's it's um, and they're they're um, you know teaching me about what they do and how to you know like engineers um, and engineering students were were kind of um, or a lot of them, including myself, can be uh, kind of nervous and more introverted. Right. And um, the company's really been helping me to, to kind of reach out and kind of get to meet people more and see more of the, the business side of it and what you actually do on the day-to-day -day job and Which is what Robert was yeah. saying about um, program management mm -hmm. is that in order to be the interface between the client and the engineer, you have to get them speaking the same language. Yeah. And not yeah. everybody understands the languages that engineers speak, for <laughs> yeah. sure, right? <laughs> Yeah. 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 That's been that's been the uh, that's been the biggest challenge, you know. Um, you know, even f even today when we're looking at new hires and and people to hire, it, it, it although people say that there's a, there's a lot of potential good people out there to hire, you know, we want to pick. We're trying to find people that fit into our system of business, you know, and so. Um, for me, that's finding someone who communicates well with others. Right. You know, and if you're an engineer, if you're a great engineer, but you can't communicate with others, y you're not even, that's not even on my radar, you know. Right. And, and so understanding what companies need from you as a new hire mm -hmm. is very important into entering the job market. And so we're going to take a quick break right now, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the other um, pro bono and other services that you provide in addition to the work that you do and the in intern program that you have. So okay, cool. thank you, this is Kim Lau with Hawaii Rising. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. My name is John Waihe'e, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Hi, this is Kim Lau with Think Tech Hawaii. This program is called Hawaii Rising, and today we have Robert Kubota and Nate Wilbur from Douglas Engineering. Hi, welcome back, guys. Hey, thanks. <laughs> We've been talking about um, your internship program, and um, you also have some other pro bono projects that you've been working on mm -hmm. um, in addition to your regular work. Can you talk about um, maybe some of those projects? Yeah, so the, the main one is um, we're doing the Kakaako Shed Project for homeless housing for the state. And uh, that's a really great project for us. Um, Can you explain the project kind of a little bit? So it's a shed. It's a 5,000 square foot shed that's located behind the UH, well, the Cancer Research Center okay. in Kakaako. It, it's on the waterfront side. Oh, fancy. Yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> fancy. Um, uh, and, and it's just a, it's a steel structure 
you know, that was, I guess it was used for storage prior and some bathrooms and, uh, but they're converting it to, to a shelter, like a 24 hour day shelter. Um, so it's gonna have, uh, it's gonna have ba um, bathrooms there, you know, and it's, it's gonna have beds. And basically it's, it's, it's yeah, as far as I understand it's for, it's for families. Because right now, homeless shelters, they separate men and women, right? Correct, yeah. So the one, that, like the one I've been to uh, in Kalkak, the other one I've been out to, you know, that's a much larger facility. Um, and, and so, yeah, they do separate the, but, so this one's a little bit more thought through, you know, uh, the expect, you know, the, the it, it's just a really great project, you know, to allow, at first, you know, we were thinking, oh, it's, it's just gonna be a shit. You know how nice can it be? And then you know working with Group Seventy and their team. Um, and Group Seventy is an architect. Yeah, firm? architect firm. Okay. You know, uh, they're that the project's turning into something that for all of us that are participating in, it's going to be something pretty great. You know. Are there so it's just um, Douglas Engineering and Group Seventy, or are there some other partners participating as well? Um. Uh, I think. Tony Moore and Associates is helping out with the structural for the offices, um, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Yeah. And so, exactly, what are you doing with this shed mm. that makes it so unique and different from the other shelters, other than it's for um, family housing? Mm -hmm. Well, well, this one, the we're we're actually designing it. The last one was kind of just thrown together you know, on an emergency situation. So, so this one we've gone through, we've looked at the different layout configurations. We've, we've assessed the needs of not only the, the families that are gonna go in there, but also the, the, the company that's gonna come in and take over the role. The and managing manage company. It. Yeah, and manage the shed, you know. And so, so th you know, there was, a, there was a bunch of things that, that, that we could take from the last project, you know, like, um, like the sewer lines, you know, we could take those into account. We could we could adequately uh, provide the necessary, you know, waste waste piping for the project. You know, infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yeah. yeah you know, it, it, was, it was definitely more. You know, we, we were allowed to, to think it through instead of just slap something together. You know, at the last minute. And so, so yeah, I feel pretty good. I mean, I think it's necessary that we, you know, we do something to help homelessness. You know, because it's becoming a big issue here in Hawaii. A, yeah. A very visible issue. Extremely. And you guys are doing this all pro bono. Yeah, so so you know, the that's how it started. I don't know if that's how it's going to end, you know, but but that's definitely how it's it, it started. You know, we one day we were asked, "Do you want to help out with a homeless shed?" and we said, "Absolutely." You know, and and, and that was you know, it wasn't really a it, it wasn't really a, it, it wasn't something we had to think about. Um, you know, for years the company has done a lot of work for uh, churches that we've been, you know, members of. You know, so if we're, if, 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 if for instance, like Doug is, is a member at New Hope, you know, we would do a lot of work for New Hope. Right. You know, and, and that would be, you know, that would be our thing. But uh, at the end of last year, it, it, it got me thinking about how we, what we're doing to really affect the community as a whole. And, and I kind of felt like we weren't doing our job, you know, and, and so when the shed opportunity came along, you know, it was the perfect opportunity for us to help, you know, because, because it allowed us to, to do something that is not normal for yeah, us. Yeah, completely unique. Yeah, That's complete, for sure. completely, and, and there's such a need for it. Right. That it just, I mean, it makes it, sense. It just makes sense, right? And so, you know, we're open to a lot of different ideas today, you know, and 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 I think it's just because we're open to to just we just want to help people, and so you know, not everything's going to be for free, you know, right. but but where we can do it, we will, you know, and I think we'll make a we'll we'll make a greater conscious effort to get more involved, right? you know, moving forward, so. And another thing that um, Douglas Engineering has put on, or yourself in particular, 
is uh, another program that held interns. Can you talk about your um, seminar series that you started this year? Yeah, so we, we you know, it, we started this program that, that would meet with, well, would basically bring all the interns from the, the industry into one room. So not just your company's interns? No, not just engineering interns, you know, architecture interns, you know, not just electrical mechanical interns, but civil and structural interns. Pretty much anyone who is willing to send, to send their staff to us for an hour, you know, that, that's all we wanted. We just wanted an opportunity. And, and, you know, I felt, you know, when I first started doing it, you know, there was some, um, when, I, when I first thought of it, I would, I would definitely pass it off on other people to find out what they thought. And some people were like, well, you know, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get these people. And, and oh, like speakers? Well, well how are you going to get the interns? speakers? How are you going to get the speakers <laughs> for one, right? And then how are you going to get the interns? How are you going to get the interns? And, and, um, so was it how many week long series? So six weeks long. Um, it's actually, it just ended this past week. Uh, it's, it started two weeks prior to the start <laughs> of the, the very first week, you know, and, and, um, it was something that, I had been talking about for almost a year, you know, but I just didn't know how to put it together. And, and um, so, you know, the, the AIA president, Ben, you know, he was, he, he and I would sit there and talk about it and he was like, well, we have a, you can use the AIA room, you know, and I was like, well, that gives me a place, so it sounds like I should try to do something, right? And so, uh, we made so I made some calls, a lot of calls, and uh, I begged a lot of people, <laughs> you know, and and you know, fortunately for us, they were very receptive of it, you know, and it allows us, it allowed, it allowed me to share, you know, all the people that I've met in my life that have helped me get to where I am today, you know, and and. Uh, you know, people people who take the time out in the community to help. Can you give us some examples of the presenters that spoke to the interns during uh, this one hour a week session? So we had, you know, we had my boss Doug, you know, I mean, he's pivotal for me. Um, we also had, you know, we had you, <laughs> you know, and we had uh, Francis Oda from Group 70. Um, we had Rick Blangiardi from KHNL and Hawaii News Now. Um, we had Scott Inatsuka from Inatsuka Engineering, you know, Ken Hayashida, you know, Russ Wozniak from Group 70, um, Ben Lee, you know, we had, we had, we just had a great, great amount, you know, I, I guess they were so giving of their time, right. you know, and, and I think uh, and, but more importantly, I think it's the interns, you know, like the one thing I always try to remember is that it was, it, it's for them, right? And it's them giving us their time because without them showing up, yeah. we have really no one to talk to, you know, we have nothing, right? <laughs> so Wilbur, what was your take on the, the whole seminars? Um, I found it very, it was a good learning experience. You know, I got to, I got to um, hear from a lot of speakers that were from different parts of the industry, you know, architects and and uh, engineers, and you know, I got to hear, you know, what their, what their, um, you know, struggles through their career was, or what um, what they found good, and and um, also um, what I found really useful was uh, it was it was a good chance to meet other interns. Great. You know, I, I got to see a lot of my classmates, and I got to meet meet other people that were in architecture, mm. you know, as interns, and it was it was a good good chance to meet people. So um, Nate, what would be your um, biggest takeaway as to why people would help interns or would do pro bono projects? What, why do you think that's important? What's the purpose behind helping other people at, in, as part of your industry or career? Uh, I think it's an important, um, it's an important idea to you know, for, for uh, pro bono things, not to just, you know, do it for the money or the business, you know, it's, it's more of a, 
a community effort. You know, people need to to kind of you know look beyond just you know business and money and just kind of do what what they can and what you know they have within their resources to to help um, situations like the homelessness. You know, help, helping families find homes and you know it's it's been a it's very fulfilling to you know do that that type of project and and know that you know what, what we're working on you know people are gonna you know find find shelter in in these homes and it's gonna be impactful yeah do you feel that um, Robert do you feel that other groups in your industry do these do the same kind of giving back to the community I'm sure they do. I mean, uh, I'm sure they do. I, I'm not sure where, <laughs> but, but I think given the opportunity, I think, I think people are willing to step up and, and definitely help. You know, um, yeah. I mean, I, like Nate said, it's definitely fulfilling. You know, so if they have it, they should. Right and. Does you know. your your firm, the people that you work with, your coworkers, do they find value in the things that you do? I think, I think that in some ways they don't see it yet. You know, right. I, I think it's it's a hard sell. You know, a lot of times, you know, we're trying to change a culture. Mm -hmm. and, and I know a lot of people say culture changes and everything and op and companies but you know Nate and I were having this conversation today and and you know in order to change a culture you know you have to have a very strong foundation you know and it's not going to be easy you know and so you have to stand firm even when when you don't feel like you want to anymore right you know and so so I think that's um, a big thing that we should take away and the show is closing but um, again what Robert was saying is that it's hard to change culture, it's hard to change perception, the way that people have been going about their daily business. Mm -hmm. But I think one person at a time, by doing the things that you do, we can change that. And, and it, everything that everyone does is so impactful. So thank you so much for doing what you do and being um, positive role models for the community and your interns and the future engineers. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having us.